Hello, and thank you for joining us for another Jobs Talk with Eightfold AI, where our Chief Economist, Sonia Khan, and our Vice President of Market Strategy, Jason Serrato, share real-time insights on the JOLTS report, Jobs report, and other hot topics in talent today. So grab your coffee, kick back, and spend the next 20 minutes listening to what's currently top of mind for business leaders. With that, I'll hand it over to Jason Serrato for some JOLTS, Jobs, and Java. Thanks, Callie. Here we are in March for another jobs report. Happy to be with you, Sonia. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, wonderful. And uh, another exciting jobs report. Um, 275,000 jobs added last month uh, with an unemployment rate still below 4%. Um, although it ticked up uh, from 3.7% to 3.9%, uh, but all in all, um, still very positive sentiment uh, in the report uh, for for uh, February uh, here in the March report. Um, however, as you have pointed out very quietly, um, previous monthly reports are slowly being adjusted down. So with every piece of good news, there's always a little bit of uh, partly cloudy news hiding behind the scenes. Um, but as we look at it in deep, you know, from an industry perspective, government and healthcare continue to lead the way. Uh, but the report stated that there was also relative strength uh, across the industries. But as we dive a little deeper, uh, Sonia, I'm going to kick it over to you to, to share what you saw um, as, you, as you looked across the report. Sure. So overall, a good report. We saw, as you noticed, uh, as you mentioned, there were some De, uh, there were some declines uh, in revisions in the past few months. So those added up to roughly 175,000 jobs that we had previously estimated that were there, that were added, uh, but now they are not. So that's almost, uh, that's pretty significant because that's almost a whole month of job additions. Uh, but at the same time, this isn't shocking. The BLS does this. Uh, they sometimes overestimate or underestimate, and they have roughly two months to uh, tell us all uh, the real numbers. So uh, shocking, but not that shocking. Um, and yeah, we saw the slight increase uh, to 3.9%. That really comes down or stems from two reasons usually. There's a positive and a negative here, and I'll let you decide which one's which. There is the uptick of unemployment, which stems from either an increase in individuals who are actively seeking employment or a and or a rise in layoffs. So um, your thoughts on which one's the positive here? I think we talked about it on our last jobs report that we had heard a lot about layoffs occurring at the start of the year, but those weren't going to hit the reports as they were going to be a lag in the data, but now we're starting to see that show up in the numbers. Yep, yeah, that's the that's the um, not positive news. Uh, there it was a rise in layoffs, but on the other hand, there was the prime age employment to population ratio. So, how many people out of the whole population are working and that rebounded to 80.7%. That's pretty high. And then the prime age uh, partic participation rate, so 25 to 54 year olds was also in a high of 83.5%. It's the highest level since we since roughly 2002. So good news there. Now, when you're talking about participation rate, I also saw some discussion in various channels around people potentially over participating, that there's some tracking in the data where people are showing up where they have multiple, multiple jobs. Is that starting to appear in the reports? Yes. So in the past, we always thought that people had two jobs, two part-time jobs for economic reasons, they call it in the BLS. Basically, they can't make enough money with their first job, so therefore they have to get a second job. But instead, what we're seeing now is with the rise of remote work, people are actually holding two remote jobs, um, not for economic reasons, not that they're not able to make enough money with their first one, but just because they have the ability to hold that second job. So that kind of leads us to know uh, to seeing 
more consumer spending, a stronger economy, um, more people are eating out in restaurants. And we saw, you know, restaurants were one of those industries that saw an uptick in employment this month as well. So this is one of the things I'm fascinated about, how we're measuring and tracking this as the world of work is transforming right in front of our eyes. So I think this is part of why, you know, very quietly, all of these reports are being adjusted after the fact, but the way the way people are working, the way work is getting done um, is very different from how many of the systems are set up to track this. But now we're starting to see, you know, we've been doing this now for quite some time. Um, it is starting to show up in the numbers as some of the systems are catching up. Yep, yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're going to see revisions. Uh, it's not that shocking, but uh, at the time of the re re reports, they come out so quickly uh, that we use a, and we meaning the US statisticians use a, you know, first guess kind of uh, figure. Now, since we last chatted, I mean, we last chatted on Groundhog's Day in February, um, I was uh, very happy and honored to see you have a feature published in Inc. Magazine. So my Jolt's job and Java partner um, was published on Inc. Magazine, and I can say that we do this together and that uh, my, my economist friend is, is published, and you, you, you humor me by allowing me to join you in these conversations. But when I read the article, I really appreciated and loved the insights. And you had three predictions in the article that was featured in Inc. Magazine. One, uh, the labor market will continue to add jobs, which we see in today's report. Two, uh, retaining and training workers will become a higher priority. And three, AI will be a catalyst for job creation. Do um, you want to talk about those predictions and maybe how they feed into some of the report today? Sure, yeah, so I'll start with the first one. Uh, labor market will continue to add jobs. I think it's going to be overall, we have a strong labor market going on. It's cooling off a little bit, but we're likely to see at least in the the first half of this year that it's we're going to see roughly 180 to 250,000 jobs added per month. That's uh, the consensus among economists uh, for the first half of the year at least. And um, and then for the second one, it's retraining and training workers will become a higher priority. And that really makes sense if you look at the overall macro environment today. It's, you know, AI skills are top of mind. The new tech skills are top of mind. Uh, workforces don't want to get rid of their employees. So layoffs are still at a low. Uh, hiring is not as high as it was in the past few years. So we're also calling it a great stay. You know, we moved from great resignation to a great stay. So if you're keeping your employees, you're going to have to retrain them, um, whether you upskill them or reskill them into how, the technologies of the future, whether that's working with the new AI systems or that's, um, you know, working with the new uh, technologies that you would like to see more implemented in your workforce. You know, one of the one of the discussions that's going on amongst uh, people out there on social media is how hard it is for people to find a job right now, especially those that were impacted in a layoff. And in previous discussions, we've talked about how organizations were kind of reevaluating their roles and reexamining their skills and kind of um, really scrutinizing their, their job advertisements to figure out how, were these really the jobs they were going to need going forward. But to kind mm -hmm. of double click on the point you just made, I think organizations are also increasingly looking at their talent within first, right? So in terms of retaining and training their workers, um, they're trying to figure out who they have internally first and who they can reskill and redeploy and maybe shuffle around into new areas before they look to a requisition to bring someone from the outside. So I think that's also weighing in on the number of opportunities for people to get hired from the outside and why people may be feeling that way for those that have gone through some of those recent uh, layoffs and reductions in force. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It makes sense. I also think it's a win-win for organizations and for workers, right? If you are 
an employee at an organization and they don't offer you any training for the future skills of tomorrow, of course you're going to leave and you're probably going to want to move around to another maybe um, not only a different role, but perhaps a different uh, industry or uh, you want to experiment on on the things that you want to learn for tomorrow. You want to be a better employee. And so one way to do that is to get reskilled. Uh, so if your employer is allowing you to do that, why wouldn't you want to stay? You already know the culture. You're you should be pretty happy from where, where you are, uh, if you're happy where you are rather. And, and then you can um, you know, use your knowledge that you already have of the organization and move to another team or, or use that uh, to excel in your current position. And then the third prediction in your article was how AI will be a catalyst for job creation. And during my time as an analyst, kind of the AI explosion in HR, this was always a heated debate. How many positions would, would AI impact? How many positions would AI create? And very early on, you know, the analyst firm that I worked for took a position that AI would ultimately end up creating more positions than it would um, remove. Um, but what, is, what are your thoughts on this? I, I see you see that it'll be a catalyst for job creation as well. I do. I think all of the research that's out there is pointing to that same direction of job growth. Of course, there will be some jobs lost, but the majority will be the new jobs that you can't even really conceive of today because they're not part of our daily use. Like we don't need them today with AI. So we can't even really fathom what the new jobs will even be. Uh, you know, if you think about in the past, there was the internet or any other technological advancement. Uh, there were always more jobs created than lost. I was listening to a podcast last week during some travel. I was doing some travel and during this podcast, they were talking, they referred to different um, cycles of work and innovation as the before times, mm -hmm. the before times. And I <laughs> chuckled because um, I don't consider myself that old, although I feel old, I don't consider myself that old. And as I think about it, you know, the world is changing faster and these cycles of innovation are occurring closer together and more frequent. When I think about how long I've been in the workforce and you actually break it down, I've worked through five segments of what could be considered before times right so okay. co co coming into co coming into you know the personal computer and then coming into the internet and then coming into social media and coming into the pandemic and coming into artificial intelligence and now generative ai like we these these cycles of change are getting shorter and shorter and faster you know faster and deeper so I, I do agree that we've gone through change before um, and they are a catalyst for creation. Um, there was a quote in, in your article that I loved and it said, um, these are your words, so I hope you don't feel awkward, but I, I just, I've, I've been using them out, out on, the, on the trail. Um, AI could also start bridging previously disparate areas of expertise. And if successful, AI will forge entirely new positions, industries, and learning opportunities while enhancing employee skills, creating a higher ceiling and enabling wider prosperity.